and welcome back to my channel. I have moved to the wonderful Spain. I am living in Palma de Mallorca. If you do follow me on my Instagram, you would be already up to date with all of Mallorca. I've been posting on there, but I have moved and I'm no longer living in London. So the moving process did take quite a few months and I'm very sad that I don't have any of the things that I collected for my YouTube channel, my teaware, my bags, all been put away in storage. So it's almost like a fresh start, but also a little bit of minimalism is soaking into my lifestyle now. So I'm here to share with you a purchase that I did while living here in Mallorca. And before we get into the unboxing and everything, you may be a little bit aware of the history of Hermes, but I wanted to get into it a little bit before we get started. So if you want to stick around, then subscribe and like, and let's get into it. So I've known about Hermes for a few years, years I've never collected any bags from them but I've always had little bits and pieces that I bought from them such as twillies belts and other little homeware items when I was living in London I did get a little bit of homeware some tea sets and I've sort of gotten into the brand through their accessories but I've really wanted for a few years now to collect a Birkin bag now it's very common knowledge that it is difficult just to walk in store and obtain a bag you can do so in Paris at one of their flagship boutiques but it also is very hard to get that appointment and then when you do get the appointment getting allocated a bag can also be difficult if you don't have a very strong purchase history and a few times I have asked a sales associate when I walked into store about the process of getting a bag now when I was living in London I did put a wish list down for a Birkin bag and I don't know how long this process will take now that I'm not living there anymore I'm still traveling to London but it might be a little bit difficult to keep that relationship going with the brand so nevertheless the Birkin bag was inspired by the 60s 70s muse and British actress Jane Birkin well known for her stunning looks and starring in movies such as The Blow Up and The Swimming Pool, a film about a romance and tension between people sharing the same villa somewhere in the French Riviera. Jane's style was chic, relaxed and generally quite messy, which the French admired using her for many of their films. She always carries in her off time a basket bag that she was known for. However, it was on a flight from Paris to London when CEO of Hermes Jean-Louis de Mas spotted Birkin struggling to put her contents of her basket bag back inside after everything had tumbled all over the aeroplane floor. So he did approach her and say, I would like to make you a bag that you can carry that will hold all of your things and you won't run into problems like all your contents falling out. After after expressing her need for a weekend bag that fits all of her things to her liking, well this sparked an idea for Damas to create a bag just for her and later launched the Birkin bag for Hermes in 1984. So he designed the bag for Jane Birkin and he then gifted it to her. This bag was really popular in the 90s. It was the it bag of the time, spotted on many celebrities, but it really didn't skyrocket until about 2001 when that episode of Sex in the City featured Samantha on a quest to the fashion house to pick up the it bag of the time. When she sees it, she no doubt finds it an irresistible must have piece. She proceeds to ask how much it is, which is then followed by the pricing of the Birkin and information that there is also a waiting list of five years. This leads to the very infamous scene. For a bag? It's not a bag. <laughs> It's a Birkin. This has trended so much on social media. The allure of having something that you can't get, even if you have the money for it. Having a waiting list always creates a little bit of hype around the brand. So this actually got a lot more popular because Sex and the City was such a popular show at the time. So basically we have Sex and the City to thank for the popularity, but Jane Birkin for the inspiration. So while I'm staying here, my partner flew to London. He had to go there for business and um, hospital appointments. He has recently broken his leg, so he's doing physio and doctor's checkups. On the way back, he did get me a few goodies, which I was so surprised by. So I wanted to share them with you as well before I do the unboxing. So he went to Joe Malone. 
I just love the packaging of Jo Malone. And I remember when we first met, he actually bought me a present from Jo Malone. I remember it was like a body scrub and I can't remember what it was for. It could have even been Valentine's Day. I've used those body scrubs for years. I know I should have thrown them out. But I got this Mira and Tonka fragrance. If anyone smelt this, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's got that Tonka smell, but it's very feminine at the same time. So really wearable, which I love. I'm gonna spray some on me today. So yeah, it's a beautiful scent and it is probably one of the most popular scents from the brand. I'm really happy with that as I have nothing that smells like Tonka. I've always allured and lusted for the idea of getting a Tonka fragrance. I've never bought the bullet and I have a lot of fragrances now. So, so I also got another fragrance in here. So this is a new fragrance by Jo Malone. And this one is more of like a summer fragrance, more of like an everyday kind of a vibe, something that you can wear when it's warm outside and you just want that like casual sort of outfit. <laughs> So the packaging is so nice. I've already taken out the smaller one in there. This one is called Pomegranate Noir. Pomegranate, especially when you first spray it, it's very strong. It just like projects out and it might also be a little bit too intense on the first spray, but when it matures, it turns so lovely. It has like this wooden kind of incense -y smell and then it matures even more and turns slightly floral, but only the tiniest bit. So it really has a unique scent and I love Jo Malone for their fruity smells and their citrus smells and their florals because they do them really, really well. This one is so beautiful to wear during the day. It's just so easy and it lasts a long time. Sometimes the fragrances can be really beautiful on first spray, but you'll walk out and it'll be like an hour later and you can't smell anything anymore. Well, I don't have any problems with this one. So it's super, super beautiful. And I really do enjoy wearing that one. Now it's getting a little bit warmer. Parma di Mallorca is warm but it's not warm all throughout the year so you still need to wear a jacket at this time of the year but it will get really warm soon so it'll be really good to like bust that one out in the summertime okay so that's everything from joe malone he also went to hermes i was not expecting anything from hermes it was so sweet so inside here you have the beautiful package beautiful orange packaging and here we have a little box. What could it be? Anyone want to guess in the comments what this one could be? He never goes into Hermes by himself. He's always like, you can go in there, you can go in there. And I don't expect him to go in there because it is sort of a wild animalistic environment. Sometimes when you walk in there, it can be a little bit too crowded and people are all sort of anxious waiting to get served by an SA. But anyway, so in here we have, have to shake it out. So this is a lid. So you can already tell it's something from Homewares. And then in here, oh, it doesn't want to come out. It's so snug. Okay, so we have a little cup and this is from the Mosaic collection. So it has this gray and then it's also got palladium. And then you've also got a little bit of white tiles, mosaic all the way around, which is so, so cool. And basically it sits on a little plate. So this is for tea drinking. So you have the lid as well. So you pop the lid on top, just like that. Now, isn't that so gorgeous? I thought this was so thoughtful. It's kind of just like an ornament. You could put like earrings in there or you could put I suppose like a necklace or rings, anything ornamental or decorative, you could also pop in there. What the sales associates said it was actually for was leaf tea. So when you're drinking a loose leaf that has quite large leaves where they expand in the water, a lot of like Chinese and Japanese teas, basically you put them in there and then you pour the water. This keeps the heat inside. So you put the lid on top like this and then when you drink, you actually Pour it in and this is what the sales associate told him which I thought was so helpful basically you pull it down and then you drink it like that and then the lid protects it from obviously protects you from getting all the leaves all over your mouth and also keeps the heat in because it's quite a small cup as well so 
I also do have a few pieces from the Mosaic collection that I collected in London. I never filmed them, they are in storage now, I just never got around to them, but I've got like the plates and yeah, I just probably want to complete the set eventually, but yeah, this is really, really so cute. And also I wanted to say something unique that the sales associate mentioned is that each of these are stamped with an artisan mark that is a way of authenticating them so that you don't get misled by fakes on the market. They all have a very special stamp and it is on each piece of their mosaic collection and you can't really make it out but it's really small and they've got numbers so everything is precise and I think it would be really difficult to sort of replicate that so it's really quite good to know that each of them can be identified in a certain way with a certain number. The little things like that that you wouldn't really expect but they are really magnificent pieces. This is so detailed the mosaic is tiny on them. Okay now the moment we've all been waiting for. So I went to a consignment store here in Palma de Mallorca. Palma doesn't have a lot of places to shop luxury. I would say compared to London or coming from London, I can say that. Um, I think for Palma, it is really good. I'm actually living right in the city centre, so I'm on the strip of where all the luxury stores are. And the biggest one that they have is Rolex and Louis Vuitton. And Louis Vuitton is under construction at the moment. So I have gone in there and had a look around, but it's so tiny. And there is a lot of Louis Vuitton bags in Palma de Mallorca. If you're living here, that is like the most prestigious brand that you can buy from. But they also have consignment stores throughout the island. So I've been to a couple of them and I've seen some really good pieces. They store Chanel, Hermes and many others as well. So just like in London, there are a few of those. And this one that's right in the city centre seems like the most modern. It has quite a lot of Hermes in there. So they have things from like trinkets, clothing, all that sort of a thing. I will link the Instagram description here so you can have a little look at the Instagram site. And if you are coming on holiday to Palma de Mallorca, you can also go and check it out. Now, the best thing about being here is that it is a little bit of an older demographic. So the people living here are retired and people who, there are expats as well, but it's not really a huge luxury scene. So it is great to take advantage when they have the odd piece coming in. And I noticed that some of the bags that they had in store were like lusted after in the UK. And obviously they are a little bit cheaper here because you are paying in euros. And they had them in small sizes as well. So they had them in size 20 and 25. Now I'm not so knowledgeable on the Kelly 20s and the 25s, but they did have colors such as like biscuit, neutral colors, and also some beautiful blue colors as well. Now, what I wanted for my first piece from Hermes was something that is going to stand out. I know a lot of people are very much into neutrals and forever colors, but I do have quite a large bag collection and I have a lot of neutral bags now from Dior and Mulberry and I really do love the ones that I have, but I just want something a little bit more punchy and for summer. Okay, so let's get into it. So the box, let me just get it. She did say to me that it comes with all the receipts. That's so exciting. We have here the receipt. I think this is the original receipt. Yep. Wow. So this bag was purchased in 2020. Now, obviously the resale markup for Hermes bags is a lot higher. So when you do get the chance to buy it in store, you do save quite a lot of money on the bag. However, there seems to be this one-to-one -one ratio for buying a bag. So a lot of people can be quite turned off by it. This is not a legitimate rule that Hermes has, but a lot of people have reported that this is how they sort of obtain the bags in store. So when you're buying pre-loved, obviously you're paying sort of that tax of not having to do that and still getting your bag, of course. They have raincoats, a raincoat protector. I heard that they discontinued it actually, but because this is from 2020, they still have it in there. The boxes are really handy for storing the bag long-term if you're not using it. Oh my goodness. I got a Birkin 35 
in the color bamboo togo leather and gold hardware this when i saw it i thought oh my goodness this is the size that i need when i tried on the smaller sizes like the kelly 20 i just thought it was too formal because it was so tiny more i know neutrals are really popular but i find that because it's such a plain looking bag it's nice to have such a bright color so that was my thought process this green is a beautiful beautiful color it's called bamboo so bamboo but um, it's spelled O-U. It's kind of like a, a forest green. I'm not sure if it's correct on camera, but it is a very, it's, a, it's like a bright green. This one they no longer have in the boutique. I think this was released in 2017 and this was bought in 2020. Let's just take off all the gear because she has been buttoned up. The gold hardware is quite bright. It almost looks, I think it is, it's real gold plated. Oh. And it just feels so soft. This bag over time is going to probably give way. You'll have to sort of accept that it's going to wear that way. The recommendation is for the bag to be stored like this, but you know, a lot of the time when you're using it, it's gonna stand up. So you will eventually lose this beautiful shape that it has. I think if you do have the smaller bags, then they will hold their structure a lot better. But oh my goodness, just have a look at this. I'm so excited to own a Birkin. My first Birkin in this beautiful color. I really did think that this is just the one that stood out the most. There was biscuit there, and normally I would be like, oh yeah, like I like that kind of, that color, that neutral color, but I just thought I have so many bags that look like that, that it wouldn't stand out in my collection. So time to get something that stands out. And I also love the fact that it is gold hardware because I do have a lot of light gold and a little bit of silver in my closet, but not really a lot of rich gold hardware. So very excited for this summer to wear this one. It is quite a large bag and it's all completely leather. On the outside obviously is calf skin and then on the inside is chevre leather, which is like a goat skin. And you can see the texture is actually different when you look on the inside. It has a bit more of a shiny finish and the outside is quite matte, but over time it is going to get a bit of a sheen on the handles, the rest of the bag is also going to change. And I think that's just um, owed to the craftsmanship and how these bags are made. Like the leather is, it's just, it smells so beautiful. Like, you know, when you've got almost like a fresh car, when you've got a new car, that smell where it's like, it's almost like potent. And the only thing that I can, explain that smells similar to this and if you have that then you'll kind of get a gist of how it smells is my Mulberry Alexa bag so the brown one in particular that one has raw cowhide um, on the underside of the leather and it's also pebbled as well and that one really smells quite strongly of leather that's what I could compare this one to but yeah just looking at the bag it's just immaculate I'm still yet to get this double authenticated because I do want to make sure a hundred percent that it is authentic I know it is you can't be too safe I know these bags are replicated quite a lot so it is really important just to make sure that if you are spending that much money then you're definitely double triple checking we have a beautiful clochette in here it's got a little gold padlock as well so this one you can wear it on the bag i don't know if i will if you can i'll show you what it looks like so that's what it looks like with the clochette on it's not too bad i'd probably get some accessories for this even because I do think it is you know it's quite large and you could definitely get away with some beautiful twillies on here I'm thinking like maybe yellow colored twillies or blue would look really good with this beautiful green they have rodeos as well the store that I actually went to did have a few accessories they had like scarves and things um, I'm not too sure whether or not I'm gonna get one now I might just visit the Hermes store and buy but this is my first official Birkin I could not be happier guys obviously this bag has a lot of punch to it so you know you can either choose if you want your outfit to be completely like styled with color or you could just wear it simply I'm just in white today I'm gonna go out soon and I feel like this is also really appropriate to just you know kind of have a blank canvas and let the bag shine really depends on what you want to do but yeah uh, this is how it looks like on me I'm very tall so for reference I'm 5'10 
so this bag does not look overwhelming on my frame if you were like 5'5 five five, then this would look you know quite small on you but for me it is quite a good size I probably wouldn't always collect this size I think it is probably more than I need it's kind of the size that I'd use if I was putting laptops in bags which I'm not going to do with this or you know quite a lot of things like even shopping I would use a bag this size but I wouldn't always carry a bag of this size I think I hope you like this unboxing today I will be sure to share with you some of the things that I'm getting up to in Parma. I am kind of taking a step back from the social media, so I'm not posting quite a lot, and I'm really enjoying, just enjoying the little things in life here. And I can't wait to start wearing it. You don't see a lot of Birkins here, you see a lot in London, but not so much here. So yeah, that's how it looks with the sangles up, so you can see. Yeah, just it's just beautiful. Like, it's such a simple bag, but there's so much hype around this bag and you can really see that quality is there. Like it just has this amazing feel to it. Leave your comments what you think down below and I'll see you in the next one. Love from Hamadou Mallorca.